Artillery is back on the scene with a whole new lineup of 3D printers this year. Today we'll take a look at what they've done here with the new Sidewinder X3 Pro, but first let's print some things. This awesome wavy vase is from user Saber Dynamics on printables, and I printed it in Anycubic Gray PLA. Next, I found this awesome owl skull from user Peter Farrell on printables, and I printed it in 3D Jake Matte Orange Eco PLA. At a layer height of 0.15 millimeters, this took about eight hours, and organic supports did an awesome job supporting all the overhangs in this rather complex model. Finally, this ATAT -AT from Fab365. Again, printed in Anycubic Gray PLA, and there was a small fail on the leg portion of the model, but the rest came out great, so I just reprinted the legs using a raft. And here's the assembled model. There are so many points of articulation here, even the little toes on the feet move. Super cool design from the people over at Fab365. I didn't change any settings they provided in the artillery slicer, so this is exactly how it prints out of the box. And with that being said, during the course of using this machine, I had a handful of print fails. First, I had this dragon's head come loose during printing, and this was just a simple bed adhesion problem, which I confirmed after looking at the first layer of the print. This seems weird to me because all the prints earlier had great first layers. Another issue I had were these layer shifts. I double checked belt tightness and made sure I wasn't printing too fast, but these layer shifts continued to happen. like this one on this dragon egg model from user Kelly McGuire over on printables. With these two issues, I investigated my print head and found that my hot end was loose and could move a slight amount. I snugged up the two screws that attached the hot end and both my inconsistent first layer issue and my layer shift problem was solved. Okay, let's talk about the features of this machine. It comes in at 219 US dollars at the time of recording and boasts a print volume of 240 millimeters on the X and Y and 260 on the Z. It has direct drive extrusion, filament runout sensor, 
a ceramic heating cartridge, magnetic touchscreen pendant, removable double-sided PEI print bed, mesh bed leveling, and it's running Marlin 2.0. It's also using ribbon cables like the ones we've seen on older artillery machines and they include a few spares in the box here. These next features are quite similar to what you'd see on the Bamboo Labs machines. Here's the purge station. And again, the ceramic hot end. Pretty cool to see these features implemented at such a low price point. As for speed, the reskinned Prusa slicer they provide has this machine set at about 150 millimeters per second. And they say it can print up to 300 millimeters per second. Not incredibly fast, but again, for the price, it's pretty good. Okay, so here are some things that I like. The purge and wipe station is super handy for priming the nozzle before a print. The waste material ends up in a removable bucket that sits right under the print bed. Similar to Artillery's older machines, there's RGB LEDs in the print head that let you know when the nozzle is heating and give a good visual indicator of when your machine is ready to start extruding filament. In the Artillery slicer, there's no start G-code and there's no retraction enabled, which means they're making use of the firmware retraction and start G-code in the Marlin 2.0 firmware. This is the first time I've seen this implemented and it works really good. Here are some things I think they should fix or add to this machine. While the machine has resonance compensation, there's no auto calibrate wizard, so you'll have to consult the Marlin documentation and follow their steps to tune the machine for your environment. The shroud covering the hot end seems to produce an annoying whistling sound, not a huge deal, but things like this drive me a little crazy, and it's something to be aware of if you plan to be working in the same room as this printer. These bumps that the PEI bed registers to aren't quite tall enough and when trying to put the build plate back on, it slides right over them most of the time. This is the entirety of my purges from the two week period that I use this printer. There's very little here and it's not nicely formed like the bamboo poops. I think they could refine their purge G-code to do a better job and fully eliminate the need for a purge line as well. Okay, so what are my initial impressions on this machine? I think this is a solid machine for the price, and if Artillery can implement a firmware revision for better purging and auto calibrating in the menus for things like resonance compensation and PID tuning, then this would be a great printer for the price. Special thanks to Artillery for sending this machine for me to take a look at. You can follow the link in the description if you'd like to learn more. As always, thanks for watching and happy printing.